please let's just get me a dry mouth. <coughs> Hello and uh, welcome back to the ha Harry and Marcus video show. Um, uh, sorry, I'm a bit croaky. I've had a cold. Uh, we were going to be doing the Beatles show today. That's now going to be early next week. But we're now going to do um, five albums that have meant something to us over the years. Uh, so, I'm, am I starting or are you? Uh, you're talking first. You can go first, can't you? Right. Well, my first one will be fairly fairly obvious to Marcus. It's um, the rise and fall of uh, Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. Um, are these are these five to one or in uh, no, no 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 particular order? Yeah, no, just fair um, enough. That's good. Um, I'm now going to do something which will uh, after my last uh, effort of dropping the Roy Wood single and knocking over the iPad, I'm going to pull out the Dynaflex album from 1972 and bend it on screen and it's going to oh, snap God. and uh and i'm going to be the first person to snap an original 72 ziggy on screen but that's yes you can see that's the designer flex copy that's bending nice and bendy there um can you play it now uh yes it's still straight i was reading i didn't realize no that. i mean can you play it for the viewers now, um, now uh, I would, I would do, but as you can see behind me my uh, my record player is covered in the uh, paraphernalia at the moment um, I didn't realise until uh, recently that the, the reason why they used Dynaflex, I thought it was just a gimmick that they did it in the early 70s, but it was the uh, oil shortage, the, the oil was. petrol shortage. Yeah. And uh, they had to, they just made the vinyl thinner, and yeah. um, it was using less vinyl. Um, but uh, this one means something to me because I've been a Bowie fan since, <coughs> excuse me, since 1972, and... Uh, this was the first Bowie album I brought, yeah. And then, then Aladdin Sane, then Hunky Dory. Um, oh. There's not... And uh, you saw the famous concert. And then I saw, yeah, uh, in between that, yeah, I saw the uh, July the 3rd, 1973. This is the last gig we'll ever do concert. And yeah. because I'm now old, I can only remember bare snippets of it. I remember him playing My Death. I remember Jeff Beck. Did you to enjoy it? Uh, no, she doesn't like that. Although she did admit it was a good gig, but oh. she she had a um, a built-in hatred before she went because she was a massive Bob Dylan fan and she felt that the song for Bob Dylan on Hunky Dory wasn't a tribute but was taking the piss. So she um, she just refused to like him because she thought he was taking the Mickey out of is Bob that, Dylan. Is that where your your utter hatred of Bob Dylan's come from? Uh, I, mean, I don't hate Bob Dylan, I just don't like much of his stuff. I like his singles, but his early singles, but I don't like much of I like Knocking on Heaven's Door. Um, but I don't like as much of him as, as you do. Um, this track, this album, I mean, um, hasn't got a track I don't like on it. I, when I first brought it, um, I wasn't that uh, struck on it, it ain't easy, but over the years I really like that now. And, There's no uh, skippers. Um, no skippers at all. If I if I had to put this on, I'd play it all the way through both sides, and I do quite often. And I've also got another. I just had a look before we started, and I didn't bother pulling them out. But I've got another four copies of it: the Half Speed Master, the Gold version, the Silver version, the Remastered 2013 version. So I'm never going to run out of Ziggy. Sorry, my voice is going, so I'm going to let you go. You're on. Right. Okay. Uh... As I, as I said, uh, I have most of these albums, but I've got none of them to hand. So, uh, so I'll be uh, putting a picture Harry's going to be uh, putting a picture uh, on the screen for us. But our first one's uh, Machine Head by Deep oh, Purple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bring back uh, loads of memories from a uh, little bit, not. I think came out in 1972, but uh, probably brings out memories of 75, 76, when going to parties, and I would always have my copy of the machine head under my arm, and we'd commandeer the record player and uh, put on our music and put on the lazy at some point, and I'll be pretending to play the instruments. Yeah, yeah, uh, if I, I recall, but uh, it's a 
it's a lovely album, you know, uh, you know, I mean, up front, I, I, I do collect out albums and stuff, but I very rarely play an album from track one to the end. Uh, I can't remember. I, I mean, I'll own up here. I don't think I've played every Beatles album all the other way through. I just love singles. That's yeah, my, yeah. my bag. But I, I do like LPs, and there are a few I've played, played all the way through, and this is one of them. It's a, a great album. So uh, no no particular order, but it means a lot, just the, the memories coming back of uh, ridiculously playing this at no parties where we were probably the only people who liked it. Oh, def- definitely, definitely. Uh, it, no, it's, it's, a, <clears throat> it's a brilliant album. And uh, one that I should have thought of, but I'm glad I didn't, because you did. Um, before we go on, uh, I think this is the same for you. We're not doing, before anyone sort of gets steam coming out of their ears, and uh, not that anyone ever does comment, but comments and <laughs> that, uh, how can you say these are the best albums ever? We're not. We're just saying that uh, they're albums that mean something to us from our past. Which brings me on to the next one. Um, and again, should be no surprise to you. Um, what was the first album that we both brought after the 20 Greatest Hits? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, Slade. Yeah. Um, this is the original Slade, Slade, um, on uh, the original Red Polydor label. Um, and uh, just because Slade did a complete reissue scheme of all of their albums. But I'm not that big a fan that I was going to buy them all. But I had to buy this one because it was the first album. And this comes in wonderful uh, multicoloured yellow and black vinyl, splatter vinyl. Um, Right album. It probably hasn't stood the test of time. I don't know. Um, But uh, I still like Let the Good Times Roll and uh, the whole world's Got going going crazy and look at last night um i do remember trying to get my mother into let the good times roll and playing it again and again i, and again. I posted that the other day on uh in, instagram i slayed let the good times roll now by shirley and lee oh right right um lee lee, lee wrote for some but the um, the other important thing is, I think you'll agree at uh, at this point is that uh, um, it had two singles on it, and in those days when we didn't have a lot of money, getting an album that's got two singles on it was uh, was quite important. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't yeah. go out and buy an album that didn't have any singles on it. So that's Absolutely. my second choice, Slayer, and I'll, and get well soon, Noddy, because uh, as we as probably most people who look at the internet would have seen that it was announced this week that he's recovering from cancer and uh, he's doing well and hopefully he carries mm-hmm. on doing well. And mm-hmm. your next choice? Uh, my next choice, as it's in no particular order, will be The Clash's first album. The oh, Clash. yeah, yeah. Uh, wonderful, uh, yeah, it's just... Uh, I'd not really heard much by The Clash before the album came out, apart from Oak White Riot. Never actually saw them at the time. Uh, but I, I've been listening to John Peel and so hearing some of the tracks, and it was uh, one of those great, great albums. You, you see Police and Thieves on John Peel yeah, 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 all, yeah. all the time, but Jenny Jones and although what's my name uh loaded great great tracks on it i'll play that right used to play that right through say side one and side two uh i was really in i wasn't a punk i was just look most most unpunk but i was really into the music uh going out of kensington market and stuff like that to buy Get your Patrick Fitzgerald singles and uh, yeah, yeah, you um you pointed me in the in the direction of that one this week for Instagram. Uh, <coughs> that one. uh and and another picked up a loaded great punk singles I've met. They've all gone now, so I'm trying to. 
buy them all again. But uh, yeah, it's an important album for me. Still think it stands the test of time. Quite right, still sounds sounds great, and uh, yeah, it's good. And, yeah, and a, a shameless amazing, plug for our uh, for our in Instagram site. Um, please go over and have a look at it. We post uh, our, some of our collection on it every day, or if there's something special going on in music. And um, I did actually post, uh, I think, two, three, uh, two tracks from the Clashes album last week. Um, mm -hmm. Jamie Jones and Police and Thieves, uh, did, both yeah. great tracks. Yeah, and um, which will bring me on to my next one, which come, came out six months after Slade. Um, Goodbye, Yellow Brick Road. Um, yeah. uh, great triple album. I think we've shown, I've shown this one on here before for some other reason. Got all the um, wonderful pictures inside, and uh, a lot of it shows Bernie Taupin's love of Americana with like Roy Rogers and things like that. Um, this is one of those albums that if I had to skip a track, I'd only skip one, and that would be. <coughs> Jamaica jerk off. I always thought that that was a bit too cod reggae to, to be sort of, but it wasn't terrible. I just uh, didn't really like it that much. Um, but We're not uh, bad for a double album, just so there's a oh, single no. track. Oh, no, one single track, but it was an album. To the white album. To the white oh, yeah. album. album. I could, I could, I could live with Jamaica jerk off. I could put on all four sides of this and not, uh, and not take it off. It's, uh, it, it's album at its finest. It's sort of, Unfortunately, he peaked <laughs> in 1973, although he's, he's done some good stuff since then. Um, but uh, I don't think he's ever quite captured the same... Uh, sorry, my bloody voice. Um, he, keep, um, he hasn't quite captured the same, uh, made, you know, what perfect album sort of thing as, he's, as he captured here. Um, I believe you also like this album? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what's your next choice? Uh, my next choice, uh, um, I'll ch change it up. Oh, Dark Side of the Moon, Pink oh, Floyd. Right, yeah, yeah. That's probably the only one you you'd have put put money on of me picking. And that's why one of the I guess you'd have purposely sort of not picked that because you knew I'd pick it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, main, uh Means a lot. First album I really got into. I used to me, me, my little record, <laughs> record player by me bed. I used to put Dark Side of the Moon on when I it went to bed and woke up, and the needle was uh, gouging out. No vinyl at the end when it had got through to the end. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, amazing album. We saw him play it once at, at Nev yeah. Network. Yeah. Quick question: uh, Have you um, have you heard the new Roger Walters version of it? No, oh, I'm sure it's all right. I've just got got no interest really. I um, I've only heard one track, Money, and I I didn't like that because he's uh, like speaking poetry over it a lot. And uh, I saw an interview, not an interview, sorry, um, uh, a YouTube um, commentary video on it. And the guy said that he went into it expecting to really hate it, but he's come out of it thinking, yeah, it's okay, but it's not terrible, it's not great. He yeah. said that um, he can sort of see what he's trying to do, but did it actually need doing sort of thing? Um, um, Roger seems to think that it uh, needed updating to sort of with what you know what they were sort of what how they were feeling when they made the album then and how the world is now, mm. but. Um, Sometimes you just need to leave things where, how they are because they're, they're a sort of a commentary of what was going on at the time. Yeah. Next one is an album that you don't like, but uh, I played to death, and it's my only album <coughs> that isn't from the uh, 1970s. It's The Travelling Wilburys. Okay. Um, All right. Did I, say, I, uh, uh, did I say I hated it? I don't think you said you hated it, but no. I, th I thought you—I thought I didn't think you were over enamoured by it. But um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just mistaken. Um, that's, nice, nice. That's picture quite clever. It's good, uh, good, good, good sort of artists, artists on it. Yeah, no. Um, I've, I've I, not I, heard it that whole album. I, I got into Handle with Care and End of the Line because I heard the singles on the radio at the time, and uh, then I brought it from the exchange, um, cheap, and. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a couple of tracks I don't like on it because you can, it's, 
one of those albums that you can sort of hear who wrote it. You can hear that Harrison wrote End of the Line and you can hear that um, Dylan wrote Tweet on the Monkey Man and um, Tom Petty wrote Rattled and whatever else. It's just got their sample all, yeah. all over it. And there's a couple of tracks, the Dylan one, the Petty one, and one of the Roy Orbison ones, surprisingly, that I'm not overly impressed, not impressed with, I just would skip if I could. Yeah. But um, uh, the rest of it, I, I loved it. I used to play it all the time in the car um, around that time. I uh, um, And it was a real disappointment when they came out with uh, Travelling Wilburys Volume 3. And I don't know if it's because Roy Orbison died and Sonny Good just gone with the dynamic. But apart from Wilbury Twist, I didn't like any of that album at all. Um, it was one of those things where I was really looking forward to it because I really liked the last album so, so, so much. But um, this, this the second Wilbury's album, uh, I didn't like. And looking at the cover now, there's only uh, Jeff Lynne and Bob Linnison alive. Um, mm-hmm. So the rest of us are all, are all dead. Um, I do. I know Olivia Harrison's got the rights to something or other to do with the Wilburys because she released their version of what's that Karen Young. Uh, single from 1969, um, Nobody's Child. Um, yeah, she, she, uh, she, she gave that to um, some like UNICEF or something to raise money, and I don't think it raised a lot to be honest. But uh, it, uh, yeah, I like it. And, I've got uh, that by the Alexander Brothers. Have you? I've never heard of the Alexander Brothers. Oh, they're good. Scottish, S- Scottish band. Are they as good as that one you were telling me about this week? Nice lining kilts. Right, yeah. What's that one you got this week that um, you said was uh, you have to have, but it's an awful single? Um, one that's like Road Lord Rockin' at 11. Oh, that, the Pilt Down Men? That's it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pilt Down Rides Again. Yeah. I've got the promo. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to get a record, you've got to get a promo. That's... Uh, <laughs> Only if it's cheap. <laughs> That's something I haven't got. I was thinking last night after our discussion, I may have 20,000 different versions of Voyage by Ever, but I haven't got a promo. I've got to look uh-huh. one of those. Got to have a promo. Uh, mm. you're, you're next. Right. Uh, I've got two left, yeah? Yeah, because I've got one. Yeah, the next so. one's uh, uh, Never Mind the Bollocks with Sex Pistols. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go. Boy, day came out, went up to Soho Market and bought the the demo version of it um, with someone else else who, when I was buying that, bought a caftan, Uh, he he, he enough said. Uh, Are we talking someone short? Yes, yes, short stature, yeah. Yeah. Uh, But what an amazing album at, at the time. I remember John Peel once playing the whole the whole LP one night, you know, straight straight through uh, each uh, track, and that that was uh, it's just a time and everything. I I've, I've said about it before, uh, going up to Hyde Park to see the video for uh, God Save the Queen. Uh, do you do you it, think that um that that <coughs> sorry. Do you think that, like we said just now about the, the penchant for now releasing like 30 different versions of an album to get people to buy it, do you, do you think that that was a really brilliant market strategy by McLaren calling the album that name? Because when like they, they put it in the uh, window of the... In, in the uh, shop window. And, and the guy got arrested. The Mar- Mar- Arch, was it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, yeah the, uh, the manager spent the night in jail and uh, the whole thing sort of was like, Appealed to kids of our age because it. Yeah, they, they'd have all, they'd have all uh, been in it together. Uh, Richard Branson would have would have loved it. Yeah. All day go, going on like like that. Uh, so yeah, it's very good marketing of its of its own at the time. Okay. Um, that album was it number one? Was it? Take, it was. Yeah. Take take yeah. out the singles, which are obviously all great. What's your favourite track on the album? Oh, and things like The Liar. Yeah, yeah. And stuff like that. The track I hate on it is Bodies. That's my skipper, skipping yeah. track. 
I am. Um, I once I found out what bodies was about, it sort of did put me up a bit. Um, but uh, I used to like EMI, and I can't think of the names of any other tracks now. But um, uh, it was a great album. Um, and but as it's you know, of, of, of its time. Yeah, yeah, weren't yeah. it? It yeah. was the right album at another right time. Okay, another another uh, little poser for you. Had Rotten not walked off stage in the Winter Garden and sort of. Uh, just basically finished the pistols or rather turned what was left of them into caricatures. If they had stayed as as they were and made a second album, do you think it would have been as good as the first or do you think they'd have just, you know? I've never thought it. I, I guess it might have, might have been okay, but it appears a real talent in the group was uh, John Linden. Mm. Wasn't it in the end what he did with Peel and still going now when yeah, the others yeah. have pretty much disappeared and uh, surviving on uh, selling stories and stuff? I never, um, I never actually watched Pistol. You did. What did you think of it? Yeah, it's good. I enjoyed it. It's really good. Yeah. Do you think? Did <coughs> sorry, keep croaking away. Um, did you think it was true? You, you were there at the time. Do you think it was true? Oh, to... some, of the, some of it <laughs> was it. It was a bit far-fetched. Uh, I don't want to say because I don't want to spoil it for anyone who uh, who watches it. But when the scene, the bit of the scene when Steve Jones is teaching himself how how to play guitar, yeah. you know, having been a, 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 a guitarist and had to go through the learning process, uh, I guess that. The way it happened, it wasn't even the same for uh, for Jimi Hendrix when he was learning. But uh, anyway, yeah, I did read it. To see it. I, I'm, I, well, I was just going to say I did read Chrissy. It's not a secret because it was all, all over the internet at the time. But Chrissy Hind said that she enjoyed it. But what happened between her and Steve Jones in the film didn't happen. Um, she said it was put in to give a a, a romance angle. She said that uh, they were great friends, but they never you know did what they did in the film yeah. if you like but uh brings me on to my uh my last one and there had to be a queen in there um yep. because oh. I've, I've uh been a queen fan since 70 not as long as you because you got you got there first yeah. but um but you, uh, no no what did you say you you've been a queen fan for so, so many years and then you said but not as long as you what do you imply by that? I mean that I got into Queen when I walked into One Stop Records in 1974, two days after Top of the Pops had shown Seven Seas of Rye, and I brought Queen too. But you'd seen them live before I did that? Yeah, and and I'd Keep Yourself Alive single. Yeah, yeah. As yeah. well. But I think what you imply me that I've been a fan since then. Uh, yeah, I was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That soul, I will re reject that. Yeah, I, I, um, whereas with Bowie, I've uh, I've the only album I like by them, and sorry if it's funny, but it's a sheer heart attack. But there we go, sheer heart attack. Um, uh, 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 um, but uh, sorry about that. If I've ruined, no, that no you, didn't, you didn't ruin anything, I think it's pretty obvious. Um, I, I, I like Queen, I still like Queen, but I don't love Queen. Um, I I can't say that there's one Queen album apart from the one I'm holding, even Night of the Opera, that I play all the way through. I, lo I loved Night of the Opera at the time because it, <coughs> it was of its time and I was a huge Queen fan at the yeah. time. But where I was a massive Bowie fan in 72, 3, 4, I'm still a massive Bowie fan and I probably wouldn't listen to Never Let Me Down or um, Tonight too much because... His 80s period wasn't great, but um, apart from that, um, I like most of his stuff. But there isn't a Queen album that I would honestly sit down and put on and not just play the singles off it or the other album track. I think I like um, Was It All Worth It off The Miracle but and the singles, and that was it. But if I was going <coughs> to... Sorry, it's got, it really is going now. <coughs> um, if I was going to say um, there'd been a perfect Queen album, this would be it if there was one track missing. Um, Stormtroopers and Stilettos by 
uh, Brian May, which I think is really pretentious. If they replaced that with any other Brian May song, like Tie Your Mother Down or one of his rock songs, this would be the perfect Queen album. Um, Freddie Mercury's tracks are all brilliant on this. Um, in fact, uh, Black Queen of Queen 2, which was like the precursor to Night at the Opera, which Freddie did all the operatic vocals, if they'd have managed to fit that on here somewhere and kick off Brian's track, this would be my perfect Queen album. Um, uh, yeah, love it. Uh, and I still love it. I still, I still would sit and listen to all this album, but I would definitely jump Stormtroopers and Stilettos. It just plods and drags and it is really, really potent. I don't know what it is about Brian May. I mean, Roger Taylor does his, his rock stuff and that's what he does. You know where you're going. Um, John Deacon's written some great singles like I Want to Break Free and Under Pressure. No, under, really about the bass line, Under Pressure and that. And um, Freddie's done some great songs, but Brian's songs are either sort of straight out rock songs like Tie Your Mother Down and uh, Hammers Are Fall and that. Or they get things like White Queen of Queen 2. That's another one. It's, um, it's, you could argue that Freddie Mercury's pretentious as well because like his tracks of, Queen two are about fairies and ogres and things like that, and you can't get much more pretentious. But they uh, they work because mm -hmm. the way he constructs them, but the way Brian constructs his songs, he, you can just you, you could almost um, you read things about him being a very gentle soul and a very quiet spoken. It's, it sort of comes through in his music. So I don't know if I'm explaining myself properly, but um, he um, it's just uh, not mm -hmm. my thing. I'm sure that. There are 10,000, 10 million Brian May fans out there that would be screaming at me that he's a genius and I should shut up. But I do think his track does spoil this album, but otherwise it would be the perfect Queen album. Um, what's your last one? Right, OK. Remember, this isn't the best albums ever done. Just to, to reiterate, that these are albums that impacted you. Yeah, yeah. Making impact. So the Wombles? Not quite, not quite, but it's uh, 20 Fantastic Hits, Volume 2. Do you know how close I came to choosing that? On I Arcade. That, 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 I came that close to choosing it, but then I didn't. Oh, I just look at the track list, because that's a year I, was, I started buying records. I had no real music history or anything. Is that the one with um, Candyman on it? Yeah, 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 that's that's the, the skipping track. Yeah, yeah. On 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 there, but yeah, it it's just such a you know, variety of songs on there. I mean, you know, I was young, and I was hearing the Staple Sisters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's brilliant. Got me in the Staple Sisters. Uh, a lot of soul soul on 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 there. At the time, so you know, we um, are to, yeah. to now explain for, view, for viewers that would never have heard what these albums were. Um, what they were, well, they were a uh, com compilation of hit songs, plus a couple of odd ones which weren't hits. Uh, there's always an odd one on there, and this one says by original artists which doesn't necessarily mean the original tracks. Yeah, but, yeah. But uh, they are the songs in some form or or other. Yeah, basically, the... When you could get 20 hour. songs for, for £1.99 yep. back yep. in the day, when you can afford, you know, singles of 45, 50p each, yep. and you could get 20 for, for £1.99. Uh, I didn't actually buy any myself. They were always Christmas presents. This was a Christmas present. It's uh, really brilliant. It just set me off. And actually, along with my next door neighbour, who lent me loads of albums when he heard I just got into music, that was a huge impact on me. But so was so was this album. It 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 widened my, uh, you know, what I was listening to, because it was a real interesting bunch of friends that had, had middle of the road on it and Dawn 
and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. They had Layla and other things like that. It's just a real good good mix of tracks that I think has stayed with me, and I've always had had an had an eclectic taste in music. As you know, I uh, I collect these albums now, and I collect the also the ones that used to come out in the 60s and early 70s that weren't the original artists, were even cheaper, like 60p for 12 cover versions. Um, um, and uh, these are, you know, I've got maybe, I was looking through the other day and trying to sort of put them into some sort of order. I must have maybe 50 or 60, maybe maybe oh, more. Yeah. And um, But aren't you concerned about the, the compression? Um, I've got them in a, sh in a shelf unit standing up right. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the compression. Um, uh, I don't play them that often. I play them for nostalgic sake. Um, uh, one of my favourite ones is actually one that wasn't Twenty Fantastic Hits. It was uh, one that was uh, released by Bell, and it was all their singles from seventy oh, to yeah? seventy four. And yeah. there were some great tracks on that, um, like Johnny Johnson and the Bandwagon and Edison Lighthouse and things like that. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm, I, that album you're talking about, I also owned it. That's why I said it's that the one with Candyman, because I can remember I had my little teeny record player that was about the size of an album. And uh, <laughs> I uh, you remember lying on the front room floor, listening to it and hearing the Candyman and wondering what the hell it was. And that's just looking at the track. Listing uh, Spaceball Sisters, Spaceball Sue, Bee Gees. Slay, take me, me back home. Yeah, yeah. Derek and the Dominoes, Joe Cocker, Delta, Delta Lady, Not Three Times, Mardi Gras, Frederick Knight, uh, uh, Melanie. Frederick Knight. Ruby what, what Tuesday. Like? What a great. What was what Frederick great, Knight's one? What? What was Frederick Knight's one? I can't remember that. Uh, how was it? I've I've been lonely for so long. No, I can't remember that now. Must must be one I skipped over at the time. Um, but uh, it's um, yeah, they were great albums, and uh, I, I collect them for nostalgia's sake. And I sort of should have a cut off point really of 1979, but I haven't. And I I brought them through into the 80s when they used to, they did they did them right up to when the Now albums came out. And um, I believe you've got a got a, a new new one as it arrived. A KTL. Oh yes, a KTL album. Um, uh, KTL best of ever, and that is, as we said in the last one, courtesy of you and uh, your friends on Spotify. But uh, oh, if you ever Spotify, Discogs. Discogs. Discog, sorry, yeah, I'm having this <laughs> cold. It's like my head's full of cotton wool. Um, and I'll ask you now online in front of everyone if you ever see the uh, KTL version of the Coin Run, give me a shout. If it's not, if it's not ten thousand pounds, sort of thing. Because that'd be a good one to have as well. I haven't uh, looked for it. I'll check it out for you. Um, yeah, so that was it, Ruan, dear, dear watchers. Um, five albums that aren't going to shake the world, and probably apart from arguably never mind the bollocks, which was, was culturally important, um, uh, they're just albums that mean something to us. And I think out of all the albums that we've just said, probably... The two that mean the most to me are that are the slave one and the you mind you said twenty great steps because they're the first two we brought and uh, they were what really were the genesis of what we are now. Um, yeah, but, yeah. You know, but, uh, just look back. I mean, a lot of us, you know, basic rollers keep on dancing stuff like that. There's still songs I still like because I heard it so much. Strangely enough, I, um, I mean. Going through to 74, 5, 6, I was buying albums by that time and had a bit more money, was working. But although I collect those 20 greatest hit albums now, I don't remember buying them I in mean, now. I've got things like um, 20 Power Hits that came out in 75, which has, you know, mud and all that lot in it. But I never brought them at the time. I never seemed to fight, feel the need to, to save money and get 20, 20 singles for <clears throat> 249 in 1975, like I did in 72. But Maybe it was just because we had a bit more money so, and singles. I suppose all of us and our friends, we did have a period where we sort of leant towards, I mean, you, you definitely more than me, but I did have my, my 
share of LPs at a time. Yeah, uh, yeah. I had a fairly big uh, collection of them, uh, but it's always really been singles and EPs. Now, for yeah. God of all, for God of all seven inch records, EPs. Yeah, so that was uh, our, our 10 albums, and I uh, apologize for constantly having a glass in my hand non stop, but if I didn't keep my throat liquid, liquefied, I'd have been croaking like a frog by now. Um, the next one will be sooner. We're hoping to record it on Saturday or Sunday, and uh, it will be our favorite tracks from each Beatles album, but none singles. Um, we're, we're, we're banning singles from it, so it'll hopefully be an interesting one. Um, as always, please like, subscribe, and comment. Please comment, because that does um, help us get up in the algorithm, and we're desperately, desperately trying to get up in the algorithm at the moment. And look over on our Instagram, and hopefully soon on our TikTok, and uh, see what we're posting on there, because we're going to start doing posting. A dance for the, the first. You're doing one of those dances? Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm going to be, uh, I'm gonna be um, doing a You'll doing be dancing a, to... Uh, Gangnam Style. Back. Back a, a crazy elephant song. G give me, give, give me good oh, luck. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, you'll be doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of those dances, yeah. Do you know? For, I don't know. I know I've got a cold and I'm not thinking properly. When you said crazy elephant, I thought of Nelly the elephant by the Soy Dolls. <laughs> Sorry, um, yeah. but um, I'm sure there uh, is a dance to that. But uh. Yeah, if, um, we're we're desperately trying to grow our social media, so please, uh, it doesn't cost anything, just one click, and uh, it'll help us to keep putting videos out. And we will see you, well, almost definitely towards the latter part of next week. So until then, keep collecting and take care. Yeah, see you all soon.